Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to one of our double shot interviews where we bring in someone interesting who's got something interesting to say about something we're all interested in and particularly in Auckland, the unitary plan is something that uh, is dominating the debate uh, around Auckland housing at the moment and certainly there's a lot of interest in Wellington and the Reserve Bank as well in the unitary plan and with me here is Richard Burton who is the uh, leading force I suppose you could call it in Auckland 2040 which Tell us, Richard, about what Auckland 2040 is about. Auckland 2040 is an amalgam of over 100 community groups across Auckland. Uh, we have provided advice to those groups. We have lodged submissions on behalf of the Unitary Plan. Our main interest is in having a well-planned, intensified city. We have major concerns with the Council because we don't believe adequate planning has been done. Uh, they've done huge degrees of upzoning across Auckland without the adequate investigations, without sufficient community consultation. How are you going to intensify housing? You talked about intensification there, without upzoning. Upzoning is part of it, part of it. You change the zoning, you can change the density. But more importantly, what Auckland 2040 has championed in the unitary plan is a relaxation of density provisions. Now, the zoning is one thing, but the density is another. Most development is, is uh, dictated by the number of units you can have on a site. That's density. So you can keep the same bulk and location rules, that is the same height, the same coverage, the same yards, and put more dwellings in the same building envelope. That, that creates an environment where you have far more dwellings within, a, within an area, but without changing the built form to a measurable extent. So part of the debate we've just had over the yeah. last few months was whether the council should um, allow uh, the building up two, three storeys in some parts of Auckland. What's your, what's your uh, opposition to those sorts of three-storey uh, um, buildings in, in what were um, urban areas where, where you had mostly single-storey buildings? I think there's, a certain, there's definitely a place for three or more storey apartment buildings. Now those places tend to be around areas of significant employment, so that's your town centres, some of your larger employment areas. Uh, perhaps along some important arterial roads. But when you're starting to talk about suburban areas, that is like the eastern suburbs out around Blockhouse Bay, all over Auckland there are, are areas of suburban housing. You can significantly increase the number of dwellings within those areas without adding an extra storey, simply by means of relaxing the density which we've been advocating. So that's just infill for, infill for Africa, is it? No, it's not infill. I'm talking about taking, let's say, an 800 square metre site with an old house on it. The house isn't worth preserving. You take the house off. Under the current rules, you could put perhaps two dwellings on it. Because you want to maximise the coverage, those dwellings will be large. What we're advocating is putting four or six units on the same site but of a smaller size. That achieves two beneficial outcomes. One, you get more dwellings per site, and secondly, because they're smaller, they are cheaper. So we've heard from affordable housing groups and Housing New Zealand that the way to go to densify Auckland, to cope with um, all the people who are coming, is to allow more of these three-storey apartment townhouse type buildings. And they've obviously supported the um, upzoning uh, that was proposed by the council before Christmas. Why did you oppose that particular upzoning? Look, there's, just, there's two parts to that question. Insofar as three or more storey apartments, there is definitely a place for those. But... Just, not, lot, just not in the eastern suburbs on the North Shore? Not in a lot of areas which currently have uh, one or two storey development set amongst landscape grounds. There is a place for apartment buildings you have to decide where the best place for those apartment buildings are. And as I've said, that is around your major commercial centres. You have what's called a density gradient. In the, around the CBD, you can have very big, tall apartment buildings. Around the metropolitan centres like Takapuna, which is where I live close to, there is a huge area of special housing area wrapping right around Takapuna, which is all zoned terrace house and apartment zone, five to seven storeys, entirely appropriate locations for the development. When you're talking about putting three or more storey apartments within the conventional suburban areas, that is where we have a problem. We believe there is no need for it, and, a lot of, and all of the surveys prove there is not a huge demand for apartments. There is a limited demand for apartments, and those apartments are best placed where I've already said. 
So how is Auckland going to cope with all these extra people, hundreds of thousands, potentially a million over the next 30, 40 years, depending on who you talk to, without all of this extra building of uh, apartments in these, these areas which you say should remain as suburban areas? All of the modelling work done to date has said that there is sufficient capacity within Auckland to accommodate the foreseeable growth. Well, I mean, that's been I challenged know. by various people, hasn't it? Including Housing New Zealand and the people who actually got involved in building that ACDC model, which the Independent Hearings Panel has been using. Well, that's something for the IHP, the Independent Hearing Panel, to sort out. But insofar as Council's own evidence, which it has put up for the IHP, that evidence says that there is sufficient capacity. But that's been challenged by Housing New Zealand and other people who built that model. Agreed. Uh, there are different viewpoints that come from different points of view. That's something the independent hearing panel is going to have to sort out. But I take it, I take my cues from what the council itself has put forward to the IHP. They're the ones that organise the modelling, they're the ones that engage the experts for it. What about the argument that um, you say you're in favour of intensification, just not near the, the supporters in your groups? and that actually what you are is a NIMBY group in dis disguise. If you look at our track record, what we've, what we've opposed and what we've supported, we have consistently supported intensification which includes multi-storey apartments around town centres and other areas. We have consistently supported, in fact, we advocated the relaxation of the density provisions throughout the residential zones of Auckland. So that is, those are two significant things that will, which will assist with the supply of dwellings in Auckland. Do you think Auckland has a housing supply shortage? It has a short-term supply shortage, and I'd like to take, take the opportunity to separate between supply and capacity. The short-term supply issue we have in Auckland, which is causing to a large degree the increase in the house prices, is a whole combination of events. It's high net internal migration. It's uh, significant numbers of offshore non-resident investors purchasing houses in Auckland. It's the effects of the GFC which knocked out most of the finance companies and knocked out most of the major developers. It's the implications of the Christchurch earthquake which pulled a lot of tradespeople away from Auckland down to Christchurch and then you start looking at the impact of uh, monopolistic pricing of building materials and you get into the fact that most of the remaining builders are small and small and do not have the economies of scale. If you take all of those factors together, they contribute very significantly to the issue of the housing supply shortage so you're and we, the prices. So you're saying we don't actually have a structural supply problem in Auckland? Not into the future. That's where the second part of it comes, which is capacity. Capacity is the ability of the unitary plan to provide enough opportunities for dwellings to meet the foreseeable demand into the future. We are not talking about a million people, actually not a million people, it's more like 600,000. We're not talking about 600,000 people today or the next 10 years. We're talking it over the next 30 years. But isn't the argument put by the government and the Reserve Bank and the Treasury and Housing New Zealand that to deal with Auckland's housing affordability issues, what we need is a supply shock, a lot of extra supply coming onto the market to reduce that long-term uh, house price to income multiple from upwards of 9, 10 at the moment to closer to 3, 4. Surely you have to allow an awful lot more building to have that sort of supply shock effect. But you can do that now. I mean, the SHAs allow you to use the unitary plan as if it was operative now. You're not getting it. The point that the, the SHAs are not developing furiously. Takapuna hasn't got a single development underway and the SHA has been there for two or more years. So there is a heap of capacity there. There's a lot of green fields which is still able to be developed. There is a lot of intensification able to be done within the existing urban areas. Zoning another thousand hectares of developable land will not suddenly increase the supply of land or the actual number of houses that are built. The issue is what I said before, there's some structural issues relating to the number of people who are wanting to come to Auckland and buy a house, to the, to the cost structure, to the, to the shortage of developers, to the shortage of trades. All those factors combine to make it unaffordable. 
What do you say then to um, people who are out of the market at the moment, maybe their parents don't actually own property to help them get into the market, and they're looking at you know, having to pay seven, eight hundred thousand dollars plus at the moment to uh, buy their first home, who look at what your group is doing, which appears to be restricting um, the number of houses coming into the market. What do you say to those people who say, you guys are rich, you've got your houses, lead us into the market? I'd say look at government policy in the first instance, because government policy is dictating the cause for the shortage of supply. And secondly, I'd say that there are opportunities going to come out of the unitary plan. Take, for example, my 800 square metre example, in a, in a lesser value area, so not, not, not Mission Bay, because they won't be able to afford Mission Bay, but you take four units or six units instead of two, those units are going to be cheaper, they are going to be affordable. I have two daughters who are both adults who want to buy houses. I'm telling them, wait a bit. The unitary plan is going to start affecting things significantly. There's going to be more supply of smaller dwellings, be they single houses, more likely to be uh, duplexes or terrace houses. There will be more supply coming on stream quite quickly if the unitary plan uh, produces as, as I believe it will. Just not in the eastern suburbs on the North Shore. Yes, and in the eastern suburbs and in the North Shore, in fact specifically in those areas because they are, they are wealthy areas, the land value is high, they can sustain higher sale prices. But, but the units that are built in those areas will be expensive because they come from expensive areas. You're not going to get cheap, affordable houses in Mission Bay. You may get cheaper, more affordable houses in other parts of Auckland, which are just as good for first-home buyers. Not every first-home buyer can afford a house in Ponsonby. Richard Burton, thank you very much. That was another of our double-shot interviews on interest.co.nz. I'm Bernard Hickey for interest.co.nz.